This is Diggs. This is the nameless gnome, and this is Diggs' roadmap to success. Um, Diggs is, you see, staying a little bit further away. The, the harness is up here that we just shot in the above video. And he is very aloof of strangers. So this is like a summary of what we went over. The, one of the first couple of things I saw when I came in is he was uncomfortable. He growls occasionally at people when they come in, uh, especially if you try to show him attention. And he has nipped one person, but I think it was a weird situation where I don't think it was his fault. But basically, if people like show fear of him, he'll growl at them. I think he's an insecure dog. And so I think that in some situation when he growls, people leave. Well, then it gets me what I want. Or if he growls, the, every time he growled, the guardian was correcting him. Now, when he growls, he's telling the world, I disagree with David being here. Whether or not that's appropriate for him to do is, is irrelevant. He doesn't feel comfortable in here. He is communicating that. If I'm communicating something to someone and they just tell me to be quiet, I don't feel like I'm being heard. That's going to cause me to try to communicate it with more verve each time. So if a dog is doing something you don't want, somewhere early just saying no or stop that is not really appropriate. We need to identify why the dog feels that way. It's also important for dog, to understand that for dogs, good attention and bad attention is pretty much the same thing unless you're being abusive. So when people come over and I growl at them, I get immediate attention from my guardian. Nice. So I would rather sit. Nice. Reward him for things that we want. Can we get you to lay down? Now, I mentioned, I think in the video above, sitting and laying down uh, can be an indication of being comfortable. How many moves does it take me to get into a run? If I'm standing, one move, I start running. If I'm sitting, that's, uh, I have to take a st stand up and then start running. If I'm laying down, I have to, that's two moves. Laying down side saddle, three moves. So the, the more difficult it is for the dog to get up is an indication of how comfortable they are. So if I ask the dog to sit and it won't sit, but there's something new here, or he doesn't like gnomes, or there's something crazy going on outside, and he knows how to sit, and I know he, he likes the treats, he's probably saying, I'm uncomfortable. We often take that as you're being, you know, you're not being, you're not listening. So I'm gonna punish you or whatever it is. No, if somebody tells me I want you to sit next to this guy and I think this guy's creepy and I'm forced to sit here, that's gonna make me more nervous. So if your dog ever disagrees, the best thing you do is increase the distance. So one of the things I was doing, what I did every time he, if he was here growling at me, what I would do is go like that. When he's growling at me, he's trying to get more distance between us. Well, I can throw a treat away, and, and that's an example of cortisol, the stress hormone in his blood. But I can throw the treat away, and I help him move further away, and that accomplishes the same thing. What I would do is, let's talk about guests. So what I would do is I would have guests come over. I can show you my greeting protocol. I leave the tre treat trail. But basically, I would have your guests come over and arrange for your guests to come by who are in on this with you. We typically try to shoehorn it in. We're having a guest come over for dinner and, oh, can you help me, blah, blah, blah. But you're not thinking about that. And the, the guest is like, well, am I here for this or that? Or it's, it's confusing. So go through your phone and just say, you know what? Hey, I haven't seen you for a while because of Corona. I got this new dog. I just moved to a new place. We need to help him practice meeting new people for positive experiences. Would you mind coming over for a short visit? I'll buy a, you know, a bottle of wine. I'll give you some wine and cheese. Sure, I'd love to come and help you. I've been tired as, I mean, Corona's got me bored as hell. I want something to do. So your guest comes over, they're in on it with you. You can leave a, a bag of treats out there with them. The guest comes in the, in the room, uh, in the house, they've got treats in their hand. And what's he doing? Nudging their hand and then they give him a treat. Uh, but the guest should ignore him. So don't try to pet him, don't try to talk to him, don't try to look at him. Just pretend he's not in there. But it, the, you, the better thing to do is buy your guest one of these things and load it up with cheese or whatever the treats are. So now the guest can pay him at any point. Now, um, all I want him, uh, and uh, at first the guest could just throw a treat and let him go get it. You can't reinforce, thanks to our friend Laura, uh, I know that you can't reinforce emotions. You can reinforce behaviors, but not emotions. So if a dog is hysterical or it's fearful, Giving them treats while they're barking at you, people used to think you're rewarding the dog for barking. No, I'm hysterical. I'm not thinking clearly. All I'm doing with the treats is trying to distract the dog and create a positive association, and that is totally fine to do. So have your guest come in and ignore him, and if he does any growling, then your guest can take out a treat, or you can take out a three, treat, throw it over there, he walks away, say nice when he walks away, and that might be something you even shape into a little exercise. So I might say, away, nice, away, Nice. So what am I doing? I'm, I'm assigning the word away, meaning running away from the human. I say nice when the dog achieves it, and then he gets a reward. So eventually, if he's sitting there growling, and I've communicated this, and I can say away, and he turns or moves away, and then we throw a treat to him over there. 
Uh, uh, we talked about shaping in the video above, but again, we were rewarding desired behaviors as opposed to ones we don't. So uh, when your guests come in, uh, have them sit down, have them ignore him, throw treats away if he does that. Then eventually have you, you would call him over and do a little bit of your hand targeting exercise that we did. Boop. Nice. So you do this five or six times, and then your guest goes, boop, boop. And then remember when you chop, your hand is frozen. Now, if you do say boop, and we just introduced boop, so it's not very strong for him. You should practice a lot, so he's very comfortable with this exercise when you do it with guests. So now the guests came in, they ignored me. Uh, they threw, treats started falling from the sky. The guest didn't try to pet me. Eventually the dog comes over, hold the treat out to your side like this and leave your hand there after he takes the treat. Don't try to pet him, let him lick it, because then he just gets to sniff you again. And wait, to, and after a while, then you can pull out a treat and ask for a sit and see if he's comfortable enough to do it. Sit without looking, yeah, nice. And then offer him that treat. And eventually, uh, after he kind of settles, when he sits or lays down, then you call him over, you do a little hand targeting. Then after doing about five or seven, then you have your guests do the same thing. Hey, throw your hand out and have him watch that hand, you know, hand target video, boop. And he walks over, he's initiating the contact with your guest as opposed to your guest. If I go like towards him, he's not doing it now because I've, I've done a good job during the session. But if I go chasing him, he's gonna move away. And he's saying, I'm uncomfortable. And then I keep on chasing him. That makes him, make him, him feel even more uncomfortable. So um, we're gonna have Jacob come back and work with him on the relaxation protocol and some loose leash walking and some other stuff. But teaching him new tricks and cues is gonna be beneficial. He is very, responsible. I commented on how well trained he seemed to be because he just sit. Of course, he's not doing it now, but he was like sitting immediately. And so, um, and I've been here for a while. So this is keep your visit short when you're doing it. So, all right. So we talked about marker words. I have a video on all this stuff. So any of this stuff you forgot, message or somebody else doesn't understand it. You want to show your daughter, message me. I'm happy to share a video with you on all these things. Whatever marker words, we loaded the marker. Remember, and this is something by the time you see it, you should already done this. So remember tonight, you're going to grab your clicker, Walk around your house, click, give him a treat. Remember, all you have to do is get the treat in his mouth. He doesn't have to look at you, sit, or do anything. And he doesn't necessarily know he's getting a treat. So click and get, put that treat in his mouth. Then walk a couple steps and do the same thing. About an hour later, say nice, give him that treat, and do the same thing walking around your house. After that, you probably never have to do it again. Um, uh, practice that hand targeting until you can get him to run from like way across the room and touch his nose to your hand. Nice. And then you would put your treat there. Um, let me see. We also talked about a positive reference. Remember, he's doing something we don't want. So I'll do a little one here. So I'm just going to get him distracted. See how he looked up at me? So a positive interrupter, you can either make a kissing sound like that, a long, drawn-out smooch. It doesn't work like going, or people do weird stuff. If you can't make the kissing sound, you say, beep, 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 beep. And, or you could uh, say puppy with a high-pitched voice three or four times. When he comes to you, give him a treat and then give him something else to do. Otherwise, he'll go back to chewing on the gnome or whatever it was. Um, all right, we also went over um, uh, petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is essentially teaching the dog proper manners, proper way of asking for attention, how to engage. So if he comes over and nudges me and I pet him, he's telling me what to do. He's kind of demanding it. And I'm rewarding that he's going to more likely to do it again. So if he were to nudge me, I would say sit. Then when he sits, I say my marker word, nice. And then I pet him under his chin or on his chest or on his shoulders and pet him as much or as little as I want. If I tell him to sit and he doesn't sit, I just go on to do the things I was doing before. There's no punishment. There's no correction. It does not train dogs. Anybody who has to punish a dog for a living uh, to train your dog is not a very good dog trainer. Um, you want to create motivation. So if he does what I want, then I, I mark, say the marker word to let him know that. And then I reward him. And if he doesn't do what I want, then I just go on to other things. He didn't get the attention he wanted, but he also didn't get negative attention. And so after a while, or, you know, angry, whatever you want to say. Um, after a while, he's going to be like, man, next time I'm going to sit down and I'll get that attention. And he does, and we mark, say the mark word. Eventually, he'll start sitting in front of you to prepay for your attention. When he does, make sure you reward him for that, because that's a goal. That's what we were trying to achieve. Um, and then uh, remember to use the watch word to paycheck if you suspect someone's petting without a purpose. If he's standing here, I'm petting him. You say paycheck, I would stop petting and say, sit. Nice, and then go back to petting him under his chin and then tell the person I actually did it and you missed it. This is only for a couple months. You can pet him at other times, nice, um, that you want, but uh, the guardian's mouth is on the floor because he normally doesn't hang out near guests and he's pretty comfortable and relaxed. But you see his mouth is open. It's also an indication of, of comfortable. If his mouth is open and suddenly he closes his mouth and gets stiff, that's his way of saying I'm very uncomfortable. 
So then we would throw the treats and move away. So he feels more relaxed and comfortable. But he's indicating he likes me, he's comfortable, he's engaging with me. Now I'm bribing him with some treats, but I'm not, I'm kind of respecting what he wants to do, so he's more open to it. So the more that, uh, if we give the dog everything he wants when he wants it, then he doesn't have motivation to listen to me. Now we can love on our dogs for just loving our dogs, so that's appropriate and we should do that. But if he was demanding attention, I'd rather direct him to sit or lay down, kind of akin to saying how to at, t t tell a child to, how to say please or thank you, because please will you make me that burrito? Sure, mom, make me a burrito. If you go make a burrito, that's what you're gonna get for the rest of your life and you get mom, meatloaf and, and whatever wedding crashers. So instead what we wanna do is, mom, meatloaf, uh, excuse me, you wanna ask that again? Mom, can we please have some meatloaf? Yes, I will get you some. So when he nudges you, you tell him to sit. If he complies, he gets reward. If he doesn't, no reward. Use the word paycheck to kind of help each other get into habit. So paycheck means I think you forgot to pet with a purpose. Stop petting, tell the dog to sit. And, as long as, and if it does, then we'll pet and reward. Say your marker word when it sits, then pet and reward. And, but always keep in mind, if he doesn't want to sit, doesn't want to lie down, that could be an indication he does not feel comfortable. Don't push it, move him further away. And he might just say, I'm not comfortable with the guests yet to sit. That's your indicator. So don't be mad, be like, thank you for letting me know. We're gonna have to have you come back. I'm gonna have to get another bottle of wine for your friends. Like, sweet, more wine. And so then it, it might take two, two practices, three practices, that's okay. Remember the goal is to complete the exercise properly, not to complete it with speed. Um, we also talked about capturing what I like to call celebrating, just rewarding the dog when it does things that you like. So it's kind of like a little bit of shaping, but every, every time he sits, looks at you, Eye contact is something people took for granted. So he's sitting here and looks, and he goes like this, nice, and then give him that treat. After a while, he'll start looking at you more and more often. So for sits, for coming to you, for laying down, for looking at you, for drinking water, for going out the door, for going to the dog bed, eating your food, whatever it is. So when the dog, so basically, if I'm, let's say that that he just walked up here and I didn't recognize him, the guardian says to me, celebrate. That just means you missed an opportunity to pet him for doing something. Celebrate, nice, and I reach over and pet him. Now, right there, I startled him a little bit. If he's sniffing, maybe ignore that. But if he just walked up to me and I wasn't paying attention because I'm doing this video and somebody says, celebrate, I just say my marker word and pet the dog or reinforce it but with a treat or whatever. For celebrating, I usually reward with a pet, not with a treat because I didn't ask for it. But if we ask our dog to come, sometimes by not coming to us, the dog retains our attention. Remember, good attention, bad attention, pretty the same thing. So um, it, by, if, oh, you want me to come? By not coming, you're gonna chase me around. So I just take that, so I'm gonna do it right here. He's gonna come right here, so, well, this is a little bit cheating, nice. He saw me reaching for the treats. So you wanna have a treat ready, and then when he comes and does it on his own organically, you say the mark word, give him a reward, after a while he'll start doing those particular behaviors for you. We also went over uh, the importance of exercise. Remember, sniffing burns more energy on walks by walking. Let him, don't pull him on a walk, because that's gonna cause him to pull more. You can set him up for success by exercising him before you go for a walk. Just remember, after exercise, he needs 10 minutes to recover before the next thing happens. Um, so uh, walking, let him sniff, just give yourself time. I'm gonna walk out the door and take a right, and I'm gonna walk this direction for seven minutes, and then when my timer goes, I cross the street, and the next seven minutes I walk back because I only have 50 minutes for the walk. So instead of thinking about what I'm doing next or trying to complete the circuit, I'm just going out for time, and let your if you come up with things you gotta do later on, Write them down, don't walk and your walk early. And even if it's just like a three minute walk, you know, minute and a half that way, minute and a half back, that's not ideal, but at least he's getting out of the house and getting that change of uh, uh, environment, which will help him. Um, you can also play tug of war is a good way to burn energy. You could also uh, play fetch. Um, you could get him a weighted backpack, which is a harness with uh, pockets on it, but because of his harness issues might not be a great thing to do initially. That's physical exercise. We can also do mental stimulation, like feeding them out of a snuffle mat. But right now the dogs are have food down all the time. I would recommend not doing that. I'm not a big fan of free feeding. I want to provide the food. We have one, another dog that's off camera that's a little bit heavy uh, because they just have too much access for food. And if our dogs ha are heavy, they're going to die faster. Their joints are going to get blown out faster. Um, so it's just it, keeping an appropriate healthy weight is, is ideal. That's very cute. You, you can't see the cuteness that I'm getting from the other dog right now. All right, so um, uh, mental stimulation, you could also do cookie in the corner. That's where I threw the treat. So I'd say hunt and throw one. I'll just do one right here. Hunt, nice. Remember, this is an exception. It's very rare that you say the marker word when they get the treat, but because in this one, the goal is to get the treat, we can say at the same time. Next time I have two pieces of treat and I do it in kind of a big, nice, or hunt. Well, that didn't work. Hunt, nice. 
Nice. And eventually you can hide the treats around. Don't hide them too, too well and not in areas you don't want to look for food. And then when he comes in from outside, you say, hunt, and point that direction, he starts sniffing around. Remember, sniffing burns more energy. Um, as he's going to demonstrate right there. Um, get a snuffle mat, feed him out of a snuffle mat, but first adjust his feeding schedule. So put the food down, invite him over to eat a reasonable period of time. As soon as they walk away, pick up the bowl, dump it empty, but put the empty bowl back on the ground. And don't punish the dog, don't chastise the dog. They don't have to eat, it's up to them. Um, I like to feed dogs two to, I feed my dogs three times a day, two twice would be the minimum. Puppies you should feed four times a day. And uh, if you take the food away while they're there, that can sometimes cause them to start guarding the food. And some dogs need, they have dietary issues, stuff like that. You shouldn't do this sort of things if a dog has dietary issues. But feeding your dog on a regular schedule can also be comforting for them. Regular, regularity helps dogs have confidence. So we have a dog right here that's a little bit insecure, and other dogs also insecure. So feeding at a regular time will actually benefit them for that. Um, let me see. Um, I didn't mention it, but chew items are really, so antlers and a water buffalo horn, I would get him a water buffalo horn. It's not something he's going to ingest. It'll probably outlast the dog. It'll probably last literally. I'm not kidding. It'll probably outlast the dog. Um, get a lick mat, put a peanut butter on it or frozen yogurt. Um, uh, let me see. Training is a great way to burn energy. Um, like in the Google scent games, there's a lot of different options there. So the idea is to, uh, if we're feeding them on a snuffle mat twice a day, we're using a lick mat, we get an Omega Paw treat ball or a couple puzzle toys. Um, sorry, is this still recording? Okay, uh, a couple puzzle toys and things along those lines. You still see the time at the top? Okay. Um, one of my puppy class instructors just called, sometimes that interrupts it. Um, and so the idea is to get him exercise about every two, every about two to four hours. He's probably close to the four hour. But again, get him exercise before guests come over, before you take him for a walk, before things happen. Um, he doesn't like going to the vet. So I would, I would call your vet and just say, hey, we want to start conditioning him that going to the vet is a good place. First time, go to the vet when they're closed. When it's not a million degrees out, grab a whole bunch of treats, just scatter, give them treats, scatter treats just on the floor, have him walk up to the door. We don't go in. There's no dogs. There's a lot of smells. You'll probably be sniffing the ground like crazy. And just give him a whole bunch of treats and leave. Come back, do that on Saturday after they're closed, do it on Sunday after they're closed, then go back on Monday, and he should be pretty comfortable. And if he doesn't want to go even approach the building, do the same thing I just did in the video above where you're putting treats on the trail walking up the door. It might take several practices, because right now, what the guardians do is they, if they have to trim his nails or something, they put a muzzle on him and they pin him down, and because we feel like we need to do this, but he's basically like really insecure because nobody's listening to me when I say I'm uncomfortable with these things. Uh, fortunately, he hasn't bit anyone, but uh, he had a big uh, ear infection. So, uh, I, you know, that's the one nip that he had. So I think for him, once he feels like my guardian's listening to me, my guardian's taking care of my needs, I feel more comfortable. Then we just start analyzing each situation he's uncomfortable with, like the vet office, and we create those, make those into positives. Always remember to go back to school, go back to an easier level of success until, and then practice there, and then gradually up forward. We usually go from A to J. These go A to B, and then B to C. C to D, and am I have difficulty with D? We go back to C, or might go back to B. And just like us, we have good days and bad, dog, bad days. So he might ebb and flow, and that's okay. It doesn't mean he's backsliding. He's just having an off day. Uh, remember to uh, paint that uh, paper on the bottom part of your window for a couple months to pre uh, prevent the barking. Remember not to disagree with him when he's barking, because that's going to basically be reinforcing. Uh, let me see, what else? Uh, so go to the vet office. Eventually, you can get to the point where go there when they're closed and call ahead of time. Hey, I'm going to bring him in there. I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of treats. Or, you know, can, first time just walk in there, just scatter treats on the ground. Let him wander around, get him. Let him go wherever he wants. If the, he comes to sniff the staff, tell him to ignore him completely. And if he growls at them, just throw treats on the ground or give them treats on the ground. Remember, you can't reinforce emotions. It's okay for them to throw treats at him when he's growling. All we're trying to do is make, he's saying, I'm uncomfortable. Well, be comfortable, man. I'm throwing $100 bills at you. Eventually, he'll be comfortable. And then eventually, you get to the point where the staff is maybe throwing him treats from behind the counter. And eventually they're holding out treats. It might take 10, 15 visits, but now he goes to the vet office. I don't need to be muzzled because I like this place and nobody's doing anything. If you're going to give him a shot, this is called tenting. You make it look like a tent. You do a little pinch. So I'm not going to do it here, but I might have one of you, have you pinch his butt on where they give him the injection, hold it for one second, say nice and give him a treat. Make that a proceeding. So when somebody goes like this, that means I'm about to get a treat. And good vets are usually like, the vet, and it's gone. So if you get him used to that, then actually it's not a bad experience. So um, I, that's why I want the relaxation protocol. Always remember to go back a step to a previous level of success or several steps back until you find where he's comfortable. Practice that and build that confidence and then gradually work up to it. 
Um, let me see, we also talked about rules and structure. So rules can help a dog feel more comfortable. So some of the rules I suggest not be allowed in the kitchen when preparing food, not being allowed around humans who are eating food. Um, then there are probably other rules, you know, like maybe not being around the table when you're eating a snack or things like that. Um, also there's pre-max, less desirable behavior earns me a more desirable behavior. So if you want out the door, provided that he's not stressed out, to open the door, crack and say, sit. If he doesn't sit within two seconds, close the door, sit nearby, wait one minute, then go back to the door, open it a crack, sit, get two, uh, two seconds comply, done, sit this time. I sit down for two minutes, then I sit down for four minutes, then eight minutes, I give double length of time. But as soon as his butt hits the ground, boy, that door flies open. Right now they muzzle punch the door when they want to go outside. This will teach them to sit and say, can I please go outside? That's a lot more polite, but we have to teach our dogs. If we don't teach our dogs the manners or the behaviors we want, it's not appropriate for us to say he's a naughty dog. No, he's not. I haven't taught him. I'm not the best parent or guardian, as we like to refer to him. So, um, uh, so try to take note of that. And I think that now the guardian has a different mindset about interacting with her dog. And I think fundamentally, she's going to think about things in a different way. That alone should pay big dividends. Uh, we're changing the work, living environment. All the rest of that stuff will have impacts as well. Um, so if you have questions about any of this stuff, uh, make sure you message me. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else I want to cover on this. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, just about it. All right. Sit. Nice. This is my buddy Diggs. Can you come over here, buddy? What's her name again? Chloe. 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 Diggs, go get that one. Chloe. Come here, Chloe. Come here, Chloe. Chloe, come here. Come here, Chloe. Come here, Chloe. Chloe. Come here, get that treat. Diggs, you're gonna get all the treats by like, trying to steal Chloe's. Nope, she's not gonna come over. You're spoiled. Diggs, sit. This is, oh, are you thinking about it? Nope. All right, well, we tried. Um, there we go. One last little thing is the guardian, one of the guardians here was practicing uh, some alpha rules, pinning the dog down, wrestling with the dog. Any sort of physical, uh, wrestling with the dog is not something I, I, I don't recommend because dogs wrestle with their mouth. And so we're setting up to mouth or bite me and that's just kind of asking for trouble. Um, but also dogs don't want to do punishment. So if you, like I said, talked about earlier, I think, if you have a trainer or somebody, your, your solution is to punish the dog there's always a better way of teaching it. So ask yourself, how can I recreate, how, how can I give the dog motivation to do the thing I want? You might use shaping like we talked about earlier, but any sort of punishment, if you get frustrated with your dog, just go outside and yell, go for a run or whatever it is, go break a glass, do something to relieve your tension, but recognize your dog is not doing these things to piss you off. I just am confused, I don't understand. That's why the first thing we talked about is that marker to make it easy. All right, Diggs, let's do that one more time and we'll sign off. This is Diggs, sit. Nice, look how handsome he is. This is Diggs, and this is Diggs' roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes, you mean it.